I'd like to do an example of solving a conservation of angular momentum problem, but this one I can actually do a demo to set up. So here's the story. I have behind me a low friction stool that will rotate pretty smoothly for a long time, which is good. I also have a heavy weighted bicycle wheel that I'm going to spin. And my plan is I'm going to get this spinning, I'm going to sit down on the stool holding it, and then I'm going to flip it upside down. And what I'd like to do is think about how my motion on the stool changes when I adjust this wheel, when I do things to this wheel. So let me get it started and then we'll follow up with the question. So here's the story. I'm going to get this going. All right. Uh, the wheel is currently rotating this way. So the angular velocity by our right hand rule, curl your fingers around, points upward at the moment. I'm going to sit on the stool, low friction stool, sitting still, the wheel is just spinning there, Whoa, sitting mostly still. I'm going to flip this. Which direction is my angular velocity right now? Which way am I going? If I flip it again, hmm, flip it. Interesting. And I can even grab it and stop it from spinning. And I rotate slower, but still rotating. All right, so let's see if we can understand what just happened here. Let's figure this out by going over and doing a calculation. Excuse the camera motion. All right. Should be pretty good. All right, so I have here a drawing of this story. Uh, I've got the drawing with me sitting on the stool at rest and the wheel spinning. I estimated that it's spinning with about four revolutions per second. And... Uh, that's my initial story. And then when I flip the wheel upside down, now the wheel itself is upside down, so it's spinning. Uh, its axle didn't exert friction around it, so it's still spinning four revolutions per second, but now in the other direction, so its direction of angular momentum and angular velocity is downward. And I want to know what my final angular velocity is going to be in this story. Uh, some data to put in there. I've estimated, I don't want to show where I got this, but I've estimated that the moment of inertia of me and the stool and something about the center of mass of the wheel, all that is about 4.2 kilogram meters squared. The mass of my wheel is about 2.5 kilograms. The radius of the wheel is about 30 centimeters, so about 0.3 meters. That's what I've got in my story. Those are my ingredients. I want to solve for this unknown piece. And to do that, the master equation I'm going to use is the conservation of angular momentum master equation. Specifically, I know that L initial, angular momentum initial, equals L final, angular momentum final. And that equality is assuming that I'm in an isolated system, functionally isolated system, and the low friction bearings of the stool guarantee that I'm in a reasonably well isolated system, that this will be, this will be true. And so, to be a bit more explicit about this, my initial angular momentum is the angular momentum of the person, uh, which is a person and stool. I'll just say person to mean the person and the stool and the other things that count as that, uh, as opposed to the rotation of the wheel around its own center of mass. Um, this is going to be angular momentum of the person, so I person times omega person initial plus angular momentum initial of the wheel. I wheel times omega wheel initial. That curly W thing is the Greek letter omega, lowercase omega. So we've got that, that's initial, and that's going to have to equal my final angular momentum. And I have written this way too wide to be reasonable. That's an initial. Uh, I'm going to have I person omega person final plus I wheel omega wheel final. That's my, that's my equation. And in all this, I guess I can simplify my life right away by pointing out that in the initial story, uh, omega person initial is zero. So this first term drops. Uh, in all this, my unknown, my ultimate unknown is omega person final. So this is the term I'm solving for. 
I person and stool and everything else was given, so that's known. So what I really need, I need to know, oh, omega initial, omega wheel initial and final are given. I know their magnitudes and directions. So in the end, if I can find the moment of inertia of the wheel, I'll be in good shape to solve this problem. And moment of inertia of a wheel is actually something I can do since I know the mass and the radius of the wheel. The wheel, almost all of its mass is around the outside edge. So to a good approximation, I'm going to treat this as just a hoop or a ring or a hollow pipe sort of thing, a hollow situation. The moment of inertia of a ring, a hollow ring, is just the mass of the ring times its radius squared. Mass times radius squared, that's just, uh, that's just because all the mass is the same distance away from the center and it's the full radius of the thing. And so essentially all the mass, the, ma the majority of the mass is out there. So, all right, what's this come out to be? 2.5 kilograms, I should have left more space, times 0 0.30 meters squared. When I put that together, this is 0.09 times 2.5. When I put those together, uh, I find that I get 0 0.225, 0 0.225 kilogram meter squared. So okay, that's my that's my setup for this. I've got my story, um, and uh, that means I can go over here. I guess I should also define coordinates because uh, I've I guess really hey, if I want to think of this in a coordinate system sort of way, I can define my z direction to be upward. So this omega, I could write as 0, 0, positive 4.0 revolutions per second. Sorry, that's a square bracket. And this, I could write as 0, 0, negative 4.0 revolutions per second. Maybe I should be converting this into radians per second, but I'm just going to keep it in revolutions per second for the moment, because that feels like it's about I feel, I feel like those units will be fine for what I want to do. So, okay, I've got these. Notice this is positive upward and this is negative upward. Down is just negative of up. So those sort of work. And by the way, if you wanted to write this as 4.0 revolutions per second z hat or k hat or something, and this is negative 4.0 revolutions per second z hat, that's another equally good way of writing vectors. I'm just using this column vector notation because it's kind of clear, except it would be clearer if it didn't bend around the picture. So, okay. Point is, I've got all the pieces I need. I've got all the pieces I need. I want to solve algebraically for omega person final. And to do that, I guess I'm going to start by subtracting I omega for the wheel final from both sides and then divide by I person. So I'm going to find that, oh, I'm going to find that omega person final is going to be equal to I wheel times omega wheel initial vector minus i wheel times omega wheel final vector, subtracting that from both sides, and then dividing by this coefficient i person. And I could even I could even factor out that i wheel from the top. I've got i wheel times oh that's not a w, this is an omega. Uh, too many W's and Omegas around, times Omega wheel initial minus Omega wheel final. These are vectors divided by I person. And at this point, I can plug things in. Uh, my I wheel, we just said down here, was 0.225 kilogram meters per second. And I did not leave myself enough room. I'm going to do this on the next row because this doesn't have room. So I get 0 0.225 kilogram meters squared uh, divided by, what did I say, 4.2 kilogram meters squared times, and my vectors here, omega wheel initial was 0, 0, 4.0, revolutions per second minus 0, 0, negative 4.0 revolutions per second. That's my subtraction. And minus the negative is a positive 
this just comes out to 8.0 revolutions per second. So, so this term, this whole term combines together, when I add it together, into 0, 0, 8.0 revolutions per second. And hey, I can put that together. Over here, I can see my units cancel out, which is good news. Uh, 0.225 over 4.2 times 8. When I plug that all together, I get 2.6, or no, I, I sorry, I get 0 0.43. Do I buy this number? 0.2 over 4. Uh, let me double check it. Uh, 2 times 8, 16. Yeah. 1.6. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I get 0 0.43 revolutions per second. About half a revolution per second, two seconds to go a full circle. That's pretty close to what I saw out there, to what I got in my example. And uh, I think that seems plausible. Let's see. 0.2 divided by 4 is about well, 0.05 times 8, about 40. Yeah, this is about right. This seems plausible to me. Okay, so, yeah, this is 0.43 revolutions per second. And again, the way that we did this, the, it, it agrees with what I saw out there when I did my demo. And uh, the way we did it was just to take total initial angular momentum, I omega plus I omega, equals total final angular, angular momentum, I omega plus I omega. And using the fact that these were, you know, each thing was rotating around a fixed axis, so there wasn't complication there, uh, it made this equation work. And, oh, goodness gracious, ha, 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 I've just done something horrible. And, yes, this is still a vector. Zero. 0, 0 0.43 revolutions per second. Oh my goodness, I wrote a vector equal to a scalar. That's a terrible thing. It's important that this is still a positive number. This is showing that when I rotated, my overall rotation is the person on the stool, I was rotating in the upward plus z direction. I was rotating that way, and that's exactly what happened in the demo. Exactly what happened when I did it. By the way, if we had looked at the case where I Instead of flipping the wheel, if I we, if we looked at the case where I just stopped the wheel, where, where this went to zero instead, at the very end, I grabbed the wheel, remember, and just stopped it, what would that change? If that went to zero instead, then this term wouldn't have been there. I guess this term wouldn't have been there. And that means in, this term wouldn't have been there. And I would have had half as much. And again, that agrees with what I experienced out there in my demo. When I flipped the wheel, I turned around, not fast, but reasonably you know, moving. When I stopped the wheel, my rotation was a lot slower. And you can go back and double check that in the video. But yeah, when I just stopped it, instead of 4 minus the negative 4 for that z component, I had 4 minus 0. And so that gave me a half as much angular velocity. And I'll bet you'll see that if you go back and look at that demo at the beginning, that it was about half as much angular velocity in the end. So that's how conservation of angular momentum works. It's just a matter of taking all the pieces initially and all the pieces finally and putting them together. Uh, obviously, there's more to it than this. There are more complicated situations with like straight line motion as well. But this is the core idea of how you can solve this type of problem. It's all about knowing the moments of inertia and the angular velocities and solving for the unknowns.